What's up, YouTube? Today, I'm gonna be telling you all about my nose job. A lot of you were really curious about the process, pricing, and all of that, so I'm literally gonna tell you everything, what to expect, who my doctor was. I actually had made a TikTok saying that I had a scheduled a nose job, but then I wasn't gonna get it anymore and that I was gonna cancel it. And so when I actually did end up doing it, a lot of people were like, well, what happened? Like, it's kind of hypocritical. I had it planned for like five months and I got scared like a month before the procedure. And I almost felt like ungrateful because I was like, oh, I have a nose that works perfectly. Like, I shouldn't feel the need to change myself. This and that, yada, yada, yada. I kind of felt like I was just being ungrateful by changing something about myself. So I made that TikTok. But then I realized like just because I'm changing something doesn't mean I'm being ungrateful. Like I can still be grateful for having a healthy body and still want to change it if that makes sense. Because to be honest, I've been wanting a nose job since I was like 12 years old. There's not a week probably of my life that I've gone without thinking of a nose job. I cannot explain how many pictures I have of me from the side in my memories, in my Snapchat, just like looking at what my nose looks like. And I'm like, hmm. You know, and I wanted it for so long and then I was like, okay, you know what? Maybe I should just love my nose. So I didn't want it for like a year and then I started thinking about it again So I started creeping in and I just like I just knew deep down that this is something that I was gonna do eventually And that I've wanted literally forever. I don't regret what I did. I'm very happy about going through with it It's still so surreal like I can't believe I have a new nose now, but Honestly, it's awesome and if you like life is short dude, if you want to change something then go for it You know, like you can still Appreciate the beauty that you have while still wanting to make changes, right? Like it's like Going to the gym to work out for a better body. I can't work out my nose So I had to go get it done. I had to go get plastic surgery Like what am I gonna do freaking do reps? A lot of people were coming for me in my TikTok comments saying like how could you do this? Like you literally made a whole video about how people should love themselves and not want to change anything about themselves And so I wanted to clear that up and I also wanted to explain how I came to the decision of getting a nose job Definitely not something you want to do impulsively. Definitely something to think about before you do it. That's how I made the decision. A lot of people have been asking me who my doctor is and how I picked a doctor. A lot of people have problems with picking a doctor, right? Cause it's like, there's so many options. Um, I personally, I went to Turkey because why are there two men in suits walking up to our house? What the hell? Hello? Look up Pablo crawling into my bed. You good buddy? Here, let me help you out. Let me give you some space. Oh, okay, he gave up. Oh, it was, um, it was people inviting us to commemorate Jesus' death. They were nice people. How I found, how I picked my doctor. So, I just started getting nose job videos on my TikTok, and his videos started coming up, because a few of them were doing really good, and I absolutely loved the way, like, every doctor has a style. They do different noses based on different people's faces, but usually, most of them have a specific style of the nose that they kind of do and make fit to everybody if that makes sense so i saw his account and he was in istanbul turkey and i was like this man does some really good noses like i was so impressed and what i loved was that he didn't make them tiny barbie like pig noses and like they weren't like miniature after the procedure. Um, mine is still super swollen right now, so it's it's gonna be a lot smaller than this. But like you can see, it's not like the super tiny thing on my face. I will. I'll probably put his socials in the description. I reached out to him by the link in his bio. You message him on WhatsApp, and then you get a quote, and then you move further from there. A lot of you guys actually saw my pre and post op video on your for you page. Someone commented, an angel lost her wings. Like, okay, Edgar Allan Poe. This is his account. His name is Dr. Mohamed Dinbar. Um, he's literally the sweetest person on the earth. Like, I could not have picked a better doctor. He made everything so much easier. Like, he gave me the feeling that I could trust him and that he would take care of me. And there was, like, I completely believe that there was no one that could have made the process easier and more comfortable. Basically, message him got a quote and planned a date. So I planned this like five months ago cause they're booked in advance. And then they send you like a list of hotels close to the hospital and you book your flights and then <clears throat> you fly over when the time comes. 
Honestly, the process was pretty easy for me because my family is from Turkey. I can speak Turkish. So it was almost kind of like, why not? They're so good at nose jobs in Turkey. I'm Turkish. Like I want a nose job. Might as well do it. Anyways, but they do speak English. So obviously if you don't speak Turkish, you'll be fine. They have so many clients from all around the world. He has clients from Australia, anywhere, you name it. Like people fly in from UK, America, anywhere. You fly in and then the day before the surgery, you go to the hospital, you get your blood drawn, you talk to the anesthesiologist and the hospital that he operates at is so nice. The anesthesiologist was so nice. Everyone was awesome. Then you can't, you can't eat for like eight hours before and then you can't drink water for like four hours before. And then you go to the hospital, they put in your IV. Oh my God, this, this is probably like the worst part. <laughs> the IV, you know the IVs that they put in your hand? The needle was literally two, three inches and it was thick. And I just like looked over to the side. I mean, I'm pretty good with needles. Like I used to like, I used to enjoy watching my blood get drawn. But now that I'm older, I kind of like, obviously I don't trust people that much so it is a little bit more nerve-wracking but i just looked away and it literally like goes sorry if, if this is graphic um it literally goes into your vein like this much and then they take the needle out and they put plastic in because they use that if they need to give you like to give you anesthesia and stuff like that and then they use it also on me to give me like painkillers i mean you guys know every any everyone in the hospital has an iv thing okay that wasn't that much fun but like you survive, it's fine. It's just a needle. It doesn't even really hurt that much. It's just, it's just the thought of it is the worst part. And then you put on your compression socks and you sit there for a few hours because he doesn't like to rush. So he just has you come to the hospital a few hours before your procedure. And then whenever he's done with the one before, he takes you in. They gave me a Xanax actually like an hour before the surgery to calm me down. It wasn't anything crazy. Like they gave me a small dosage. I'm pretty sure it, I felt completely sober. I just felt like calm. And then they roll you out. They're like, surgery time. And then they roll you out. And I'm like, it's one of those moments where it's like, holy crap, I don't want to do this. But you just got to get it over with. So you're just like in acceptance. And you're just like getting rolled to the freaking surgery place. And I don't even have my contacts in so I can barely see. So it all feels like a fever dream almost. But I mean, they were so nice. And they put me in the operating room. And then they like ask you, what are you here for? Your name, da 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 um, And then they take pictures. And then they're like, okay, time to go to bed. And then before you know it, know it, you're literally gone. Like you're freaking gone. And then you wake up and it, waking up was so trippy for me. I'm pretty sure I saw dreams when I was under anesthesia. That was the part I was most scared about. Anesthesia awareness, I'm sorry to tell you guys this. It happens to one in 30,000 people apparently where like you can wake up during surgery, but you can't tell them you're awake, like you're paralyzed but you're awake, like you know what's going on. So that, oh my God, I figured that I learned about that when I was like 14 and it has terrified me ever since. But one in 30,000, like, come on, like you're good. So I just passed out and then I like slowly woke up. You're super drowsy and it's kind of funny cause you're like tripping and they like walk you back to your ho hospital room. They're like, hey, like, how are you? Like kind of like making jokes with you and you're just like, Rrr. Like not like that, but you're just like, imagine someone wakes you up in the middle of the night when you're like in a deep sleep and it's just like really, you don't really know. It's really trippy. And then I kind of was like sleepy. And then after a few hours, I was like, I was awake, I was good. And it was done and I had my cast on and I was like, oh my God, I looked to the side and I was like, oh my God, crazy. So they have you stay in the hospital for one night after your procedure, just, you know, to make sure. And a nurse comes and like puts ice on your face like every hour or so. The worst part about post-op is that you have to mouth breathe for almost a week because you have splints in your nose. I'm guessing to keep it up. You can't, like you can kind of breathe through your nose, but it's not enough to like sleep most nights. I was able to breathe through my nose with the splints in like the last one or two nights that I had them in. That's the ass part because you you wake up with dry mouth like every hour and it's horrible and you snore like a bitch by the way, let me tell you that. A lot of people ask, is it painful? It's not painful, but there is a painful part. It's not your nose, it's your throat because they have to intubate you. They have to put a tube in your throat in order to do the procedure because obviously, you know, that's much better than breathing through your nose with the operation. So that really, really irritates your throat. At least for me, my uvula was like dangling to where it would touch my tongue at all times. And it had like white patches on it. And it was like peeling off the, okay, it, it sounds so much worse 
like the peeling off part, but it was just like a little part piece dangling. It was just really irritated and it hurt. So I had to eat like cough drops and stuff. And then I woke up next day, woohoo, made a night in the hospital. They bring you breakfast because you have to eat in order to take your meds. And I ate a tomato and my throat felt like the ninth level of hell, like burning. I started crying because I looked in front of me and I was like, how am I supposed to eat this? Because I had to eat it in order to take my meds. Like I had to eat it. I was looking at it and I remember feeling so overwhelmed and I was like, I'm so done for Like I'm cooked. Like there's no way it hurt so bad, but they just came and gave me pain medicine and my IV for that. And then I was able to finish the rest of my food. And obviously like some foods burn a lot more than others. Like tomato burnt a lot more than like um, soup or kind of like soft bread, if that makes sense. Cause I, it's not as, I don't think a tomato is acidic, is it? I think it might be, but you get, you get what I'm saying. Like food like that, like very flavorful. It really was not happening. Like, no, I couldn't eat tomatoes for like a week. But yeah, basically the first week is just sleeping and walking as much as you can and taking care of your nose. Um, there's this spray that you have to clean out your nostrils with. It doesn't hurt. It was honestly kind of fun to clean it all out. <laughs> the worst part of the aftercare was they gave me this spray for my throat because it was so irritated. And it literally like, it was it was just such an insane feeling. But honestly, it's really not that bad. It's just uncomfortable. It's not painful, it's uncomfortable. That's the best way to describe it. And that's how everyone also describes it. My face was freaking swollen like the first few days. It was like in here the first day and then it travels to like your eyes and then goes down. So like my face is still swollen sometimes. Like sometimes I wake up or every day I wake up and this is really swollen. I look like somebody from Whoville. I kind of do still for like, even after I got my cast off and it was freaky. But yeah, it's, I mean, it just is what it is. Like you just get through it. Honestly, I became a master of like making time pass. Like I'd be like, okay, just made another three hours. That's closer to getting my splints out and breathing. It was honestly pretty funny to be super swollen. I couldn't laugh because it hurt so bad. Like my mom tried to show me a video of me snoring and I had to tell her to turn it off because I literally laughing hurt. Cause like it pull it pulls on the stitches. Yeah, I got my splints out after six days, and then the cast comes off the seventh day. Let me tell you, cast day is scary. Everyone says it's scary. It's scary because first off, it's a whole different nose, whole different person. But second off, it's so swollen. So like you have to sit there and convince yourself like this is not what it's gonna look like. Like this part was like swollen up to here like i didn't have like this bridge it was just like straight it was so freaky and i was like Ugh. but i like i knew that it was gonna look much better later so i didn't let it get to me that much it was very trippy you know it was kind of like holy crap like i don't recognize myself at all it, it's so swollen like oh my god it was so freaky then you get the cast off they put tape on and then it's pretty much fine then like you're still a little swollen you'll feel pressure in your face because obviously it's so, like so swollen after like the fifth day because obviously you can feel it a lot in the beginning it's not necessarily painful it's just pressure and then after like five days it kind of was just like a hum of a headache all day long if that makes sense and i can still kind of feel like i obviously feel like there's still pressure here and my nostrils are literally so swollen like what to expect like your nose is going to be swollen for almost a year like you're not going to see the true form of your nose your new nose until a year post-op like my it's literally hard as a rock it's not moving and this is like this is all still swollen so don't worry about that a lot of people don't realize that and they even see people like right after rhinoplasties and they're like but like this like honestly i, I love how it looks now even now um but this is not what it's gonna look like after the swelling goes down she said like his assistant said like the swelling goes in tears like this will go down first and then this and then finally the tip drops a little bit after a year yeah if you've ever seen post-op pictures and the tip looks really high it's on purpose because naturally the tip drops over a year but yeah honestly like i feel back to 100 percent at this point i'm 20 days post-op so like i look pretty functional and i look for the most part normal I love, I'm sorry, I just, I, I stare at it all the time. Like, I don't ha I can't believe that I don't have to worry about people like taking a picture of me from the side or looking at me from the side or like smiling from the side or like, 
blowing a kiss from the side like i don't have to worry about that anymore it's so okay this is such a dramatic word for it but it's like liberating almost like something that i've worried about and been insecure about my whole life is just like you know like I, I, I did something about it. I changed it and I freaking love it now. I'm so happy I did what I did. And I'm not trying to push anything on anyone. It's really truly go inside and ask yourself, what do you want? Okay? Because so many people told me, like, your nose is fine. There's nothing wrong with your nose. Da -da 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 -da. But like, I personally, I just wanted a cute nose. Like, I just, I just wanted it. I wanted one that went like this instead of like having a bump like i just didn't like that and i didn't like how it went down when i smiled and stuff like that i don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to change something about yourself that you can't naturally attain right like i'm not gonna go i'm not gonna go and endorse bbls because you can go to the gym and look great and also bbls are a lot more dangerous anyways i'm not trying to hate on anyone if that's what you want to do go ahead like i said like for sure but um in my opinion i think this is different but yeah, like I'm so happy I did what I did and it's been so much fun like doing glam with my new nose and just like dressing up. I'm honestly so happy about it and I'm so happy I picked the doctor that I did. I can't work out for eight weeks. I can't be in the sun for three months on my face. I can go in the ocean and tan my body, but I can't tan my face because you can get like blemishes. I can't work out for eight weeks. This one's pretty much it. You just have to be really careful because if you break your nose, like you're cooked, like you have to go get a revision. And right now it's obviously like tender. What's your saying that? If you guys have any other questions, you can comment them down below. I'll get back to you guys and I'll link my doctor's socials also in the description. I love you guys and I'll see you next video. I hope this helped.